tell me is it whack up in the air Rappers scattered off the gear I can map him, yeah, the air It's like a tracker, get distracted Send him back like in the mail Not a fraction of them real Catch him left and run the drill Boom, running through the shit Like a motherfucking day Alright, welcome back to another episode on this one. Doing the GK Tech rear subframe strengthening kit. I think that's the name for it. Down here at Kamikaze Motorsports. Got the subframe laid out. Hayden's down here. Welcome back. Yeah, back again. Yeah. Seen to be down here like every week, <laughs> getting my welding done. <laughs> so, I did a little, um, little bit of a prep job. I don't yeah. know if that's up to your standard, but yeah, there's um, a few plates to go on. There's instructions, I don't think we really, need, really need them. There's two plates that aren't for this subframe, the rest are. Right. But I kind of sussed out where they will go, so should be pretty straightforward. Cool. So we made it up onto the famous kamikaze workbench. I mentioned a few times in other episodes, but if you guys need any um, fabrication, pretty much anything done to your car, you can bring it to Kamikaze Motorsports and they'll like do a freaking wicked job. Hayden's like so skillful, he knows a lot of shit. Even if you just get stuck with your car and you need to ask for like advice and things, I'm sure he would help you. Um, but yeah, he's got heaps going on here. There's always some sick cars. Like this is one of the Kamikaze cars. Pretty sick, you can see they get down. They, um, they definitely go pretty hard. Holy shit, he's got a bloody... A th <laughs> I've never seen that. That's sick. That's so cool. A 30 mil bloody spanner on for the gear stick. That is so cool. That's sick. Um, but yeah, so Hayden's just in here tacking up those plates to go on the rear subframe. And then once that's done, we can actually put the whole subframe together with the arms and shit on there. It's going to be sick. So cool. Bloody hell, I need a shave, eh? <laughs> so. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the, some of the stuff going on here. It's looking sick, eh? Yeah, bro. There's that little really boy to... down there too. Oh yeah. I really need to learn how to weld. <laughs> You've got a welder, dude. I've got to bring it around because it's yeah. like the it doesn't feed it properly. Bring it around, bro. We'll I didn't bring else. it around. Yes. So if you guys didn't know, rides the slide. This man right here, he actually works down here and helps run the shop. <laughs> run the shop. I help, I help him when he tells me what to do. <laughs> Oh, it's good experience, eh? Yeah, all for learning. It's, yeah. It's so good, what a job. What a job. Yeah. I know. You can't go to a mechanics apprenticeship and learn this stuff. Like at a dealership and that. Yeah. No one's going to be getting these sort of rigs in all the time. Look at that rear housing, though. It's like, that's insane. It's massive. She a big boy. She Yeah, we got to, um... S customers S14 in here. A couple of bride seats. Oh, actually, wait, do you know anyone selling like a, a fixed back seat? Do you know anyone selling a fixed back seat? It's a bucket seat? You don't know? No, I don't, yeah, not really. Hey. No one's selling any seats at the moment, eh? Go buy new. They're cheap. <laughs> yeah, they're cheap as. <laughs> actually, got the, the only seats I've ever bought brand new were the ones in the 180. And they were the Sparco um, ones I got in there now, and they're really nice. So I definitely don't regret buying them new, but they were like 900 bucks each or something crazy. Um, check this out. Hayden's building 
an R34 Skyline and it has a JZ engine in it. Let's see if this is on. No, no. Um, it's got the JZ in there. And literally, this has been rolling around his shop here for many, many, many. A long time. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say. He's been rolling around in his shop here for a long time. And then just recently, he started going ham on it. And yeah, he painted it. Looks absolute fire. Love red. Uh, if you didn't know, I do love red. And um, yeah, he's got the engine in there ready. So shouldn't be too far off. And you have this weapon going. I don't know if it was ever going. I don't know the history about it. But yeah, it's exciting. You can check that out on his socials. And a bunch of other wicked cars going on. Straight flat. How cool is the interior of this though? That's sick. Pretty nice. So Hayden's just finished up welding these plates in. It's going to make it a lot stronger. So the plan is not to hit anything, but if I do, the subframe should survive. And luckily you had this window right here next to his bench so you can hang the frame out the bench. It's bloody awkward though, this thing. Oh yeah, now you can see. Look at that. Strength. It's gonna be good, eh? Now I'll just like give it a little touch up and then give it a paint. Yeah, yeah, dig it. Just paint it black. black? Yeah, yeah, just black. black. Yeah. Black is best. Yeah, black. And then yeah, that should be good having it on the diff there, eh? Yeah, hundred percent. Because they usually crack through yeah. there. Yeah, right. That's not gonna crack. And now. also there, I've like a bit of cheeky street. I've hit a gutter once before and I pulled like full like pulled that off. Eh? Yeah, true. So it's definitely worth doing yeah, this. Yeah, 100%. I've never done one before, but I probably would consider doing it on my car. Yeah, sick. I just did it because I was like on the GK website. Just Making like, good. yeah, oh. Just got to get a bunch of lists of things and you're just like, oh, that will be good. Sometimes I go there for like just one part. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I could get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could get that. And yeah. then I add it all up and then I go into the shopping cart and it's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh. It's over a thousand. I'm like, I can't afford that. <laughs> and then I like just have to delete everything I added, just get the one part pop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do it every time. Yeah. Lot. Alrighty. Subframe is done. Massive, massive thanks to Hayden for welding that up for me last minute. Dude, I appreciate when you do all these welding jobs for me. Um, it's freaking cool because... Yeah, I need to start learning how to weld, but I don't really want to weld on something that I want it to be like really strong and good. I need to start welding on some scrap metal and like maybe on the S13 would be a good thing to weld on because if it breaks, I'm not going to care that much rather than if it's on the 32, that's like a really tidy thing that I'm trying to make really good. So, um, and Hayden, Hayden's welds are bloody good. So anyway, um, Massive thanks to him. Just spent ages at his house, just having a real good bloody laugh. Um, just hanging out with him and Xavier, it was really good. And yeah, so I just realized I've got to clean up all this stuff. I'm gonna move everything, move um, Marcus's engine out of the way, move all this stuff over to the side, get that out of the way. That engine can tuck in there. I gotta put the S13 back together. It's been drying overnight just a pod filter on there and bring it around and park it in here so that we have this space for the 32 we're going to go pick up um, that Tom needs to borrow the hoist for to put the engine back in. So I'm going to um, start getting this stuff sorted and then head on over and we'll pick up the car. Let's get to it, eh? All right, I've just made some space and check this out. Wait till you see this, eh? You're going to freak out. Just wait for it. I cleaned this yesterday. What? Holy shit. It looks a million bucks. So nice and clean now. Like it's. I should clean it more often, eh? Came out so nice. And the pink is popping. That's sick. So I'm gonna chuck the, um. What's he face on? The little pipe here with the, uh. The old pod filter. I'm gonna whack that back on. 
and then um, yeah, put it over there to make space. Hook up the trailer to the ute. I'm gonna shoot over to Tom's house and pick up this 32. Let's go. Alright, S13 has been moved. It's cool having the layout that I do have in the shed because I can still do what I need to do on this even though that hoist is going to be being used. So I'm just I'm going to be doing the rear bar and um, a seat. I'm going to be doing a couple of things on this, you'll see in another episode. Um, and yeah, mop the floor, it's all nice and clean. Ready for another R32 to come in, which is cool. I haven't seen it yet, so keen to see it. But yeah, um, this is a thing we're going to be doing all the time. Um, it's just a thing that's just come onto the channel. Um, just helping out a mate, helping out one of the subscribers fix his car. Um, I'm not doing this as a business or anything. It's just literally um, helping out. And Tom's the one actually doing it. I'm just letting them borrow my hoist and I get to film it and show you guys at the same time. But you can catch up on everything that happens with this car on Tom's channel. So I'll put his just I'll put his link in the description below. Make sure you check out his stuff because um, he'll go into more depth. He's actually like knows what he's talking about. I'm just a backyard mechanic, so I'm figuring it out as I go. Super happy with this bloody um, rear subframe. So I'm gonna give it a light sand and paint it black, um, and then it will be all nice and ready. And then these arms will come off, we'll put in the aftermarket ones, hopefully get the other bracket um, tomorrow or the next day for the GK Tech um, dual caliper rear setup, and then that, so I can go in, I can put the diff in, I can put, I can bolt it all up and the rear subframe will be done and then once that's done it can go in the car, front end can be put in and then it's going to be a rolling shell very soon, which is exciting, maybe in two weeks, um, yeah, which is sick. I'm super happy with how it's all going, the progress, I'm glad you guys are liking it as well. Unfortunately those kind of videos um, with like how to and me um, working on the car bit by bit assembling things, like doesn't seem to do that well like there's not many people are into it but I find those videos just as exciting like I love building the car not just as much as driving it but I do it's a big part of it like it's a lot of fun there's a lot of really good moments especially like satisf satisfying stuff when you're a bit worried about how it's gonna go and then it turns out okay that's I love it and you learn something new get it done satisfaction go drive it and just have a bloody good time but anyway that's enough talking shit I'm gonna go um, load up the trailer, I'm gonna go pick up this 32 and get it home. Mr. Nolan about to come in at a record breaking set of knots. Bloody hear it, he's coming in hot. So close, <laughs> but so far. <laughs> holy shit I'm wrecked like fire out we just <laughs> so funny story I didn't film it but we went and picked up the car and then we took it straight off the trailer and rolled it straight in here reversed and then I was like oh shit hang on <laughs> it's the wrong way around because <laughs> obviously you want the front of the engine oh the front of the car at this side so you can put the engine in with the crane and make it easy and then yeah why don't you tell me why don't you tell me it was the wrong way around <laughs> Doing some extra work for you. Yeah, yeah. And so Tom and myself have been freaking it's still bloody hot even though it's night time, eh? It must be like thirty degrees right now. I'm freaking hot. Well you've been at it for half an hour as well. Yeah, true. Well we had to like tow it up the hill and because it's got no pickup point underneath we had to um figure out how to get it. I'd tow it up the hill. We did that fine and then rolled it down and then tried to roll it straight in here but it doesn't want to roll too far because it's got the bloody drive shaft hanging out. Um, but we pushed it in here. There's a couple of bumps, but we got it there. And <laughs> Pretty <laughs> easy, really. Oh yeah, he's a piece of piss, bad. mate. Piece Pretty of piss. Much just roll right in. Yeah, yeah. So the plan with this is, um, obviously, you probably 
I've probably said it before, but Tom's um, freshened up this engine. It's ready to go. Look how nice that is. Oh, brand new seals. Fresh, eh? Got the glue and everything. So he's freshened up this engine, ready to go back in. And yeah, we've just got to lift this up, have an inspection, and then see what it's going to take to put it back in. Hopefully not too much. It's just like the wiring sort of side we're just a bit concerned about. And um, it's got some aftermarket parts that you probably wouldn't see before. These are roofing screws as bonnet pins. But he's been getting creative, hasn't he? If it works, it works. If it works, it works. <laughs> oh, shit. Nah, he said this is temporary and later he's going to do the proper bonnet pins. Um, but yeah, this car is beautiful. I'm really digging the blue too. Like, I'd be keen to have this blue on my 32. Look at that. Two-tone with the black. It's like the same as the 180. It's like blue and black. But red and black, you know? Oh, that's pretty nice. Pretty... pretty it does, it looks really good on camera. So yeah, we're gonna um, get this up in the air and then check it out and see the good and the bad and the ugly. <laughs> Pretty much the bad and the ugly and we'll go from there. Yeah, and then we'll make it good. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. I like the bonnet though. Digging the bonnet. It's like aggressive. Yeah. Like I did really aggressive with those bonnet screws as well. Yeah, it gives it more like chunkiness. Yeah. It'd be good with the front bar on, eh? Yeah. All right. She's on, let's go up and have a look, hey? I always like to bring it up about this high, give it a bit of a shake test, and then just check to make sure your pickups are like pretty good. And yeah, they're mint. That's the drive shaft there that was banging around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna um, take the bonnet off so we got some more access and light. How's this? Alright, we'll take this out and just have a look. How good is that for improvised on it It does work though. And it wouldn't come out. Oh. She's pretty long. I reckon that's rated for the task as well. Trying to juggle this. It's so so well in there that you wouldn't even get it out. That's how hot floor you is. If you it's wanted to. Anywhere. I've never seen anything like this before. This is a whole new level of engineering. <laughs> Wait, I don't know where he got his engineering degree, but I need to hit him up. Yeah. Improvise, adapt, overcome. He's a Navy SEAL. That's a big <laughs> screw. <laughs> <laughs> Back in. Yep. So all that heater shit, I'll probably just pull that bit of hose off just so it tidens it up. Sweet. But those two holes there, they won't make a difference for fuck all because we're not using them. Fuck, it should be pretty good once we got most of the stuff out. Yeah. That's a, a metal fuel filter. That's good. At least he's done that, or the old guy has. Pretty fancy. So that'll go fuel rail. Should go fuel rail, and then we'll have this returning to the. Yeah, so that one will feed to the fuel rail, this will feed to the regulator, it's a piece of piss. No. Yeah. Um, we'll feed the loom in, we're going to block that before it goes back together. Oh yeah. The loom's pretty easy on these, there's not a whole heap of plugs, gearbox. We've got to fit that dump pipe to it too, hopefully yeah, that. dump will be easy to do out of a car, I reckon. Yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. He had it all attached, so it came off like that, that's probably half the reason it cracked. Mm. It would have got caught on something. Mm. But yeah, first thing, pull the old unnecessary crap out, which you don't have to pull out, it'll make our life easier. Not mm. having extra stuff in the way, trying to figure out what goes where. Yeah, like that. We can eliminate stuff, yeah. We can eliminate all of that, then it's nothing to look at and get confused by. Yeah, so this um, had high cars in it, and it's actually got steering lines that go from here all the way down to the high cas at the back and there's like another pump here and then it comes around and goes onto the where it would bolt onto the high cas high cas high, high cas at the back but there's a lockout bar in here because you, you don't want a high cas when you're trying to drift you know um it's like the biggest flop eh nissan's nissan's biggest flop 
Hi, Kaz. I mean, it was good when it first came out, 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. It was shit. It's but always been shit. So yeah, we're just looking over the car, figuring out what we're gonna take off it first, get rid of all the jazz, like the charcoal canister line, those steering lines, a few other things, and yeah. What? And his catch can drain. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, nice. It's just a piece of hose. Yeah, fuck it, that'll be right. Just dripping oil straight onto the road. It must breathe pretty good, because it hasn't made too much of a mess. Imagine you're like drifting and this is just dropping right in front of your tire. Yeah, it's not it's good. So stupid. It's not good. It's like my old catch cam was doing the same thing. But yeah, we're gonna uh, wrap it up here and come back another day because it's pretty late. It's like I think it's like 8:30 or something. Gonna go up have some dinner. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out Tom's channel. Um, it will be in the description below. And like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Loops the front here for the cooling. That's all high cast. Thank <laughs> you.